presents Pennzoil at the half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi, once again, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to Pennzoil at the half. At halftime, we have a one-point game. Kentucky on top of Michigan State, 36-35. I'm joined once again by Clark Kellogg and Utah coach Rick Majerus. Most of the first half of this game seemed to belong to Kentucky, and then all of a sudden, back come the Michigan State Spartans. Well, early in, the, early in the half, Kentucky was getting fast break baskets, and they were getting too many easy second shots. They had sometimes two and three rebound attempts. Uh, Michigan State did a good job of addressing that the later part of the half, and then you got to credit Granger. He connects for three long balls, and I'll tell you what, now they're back in the game. Clark. Well, when you consider what Michigan State has to do, I think when you look at the second half of this game, both of these teams rely on their perimeter shooting to be the best they can be. The transition game, I think, has to kick in the high gear for Michigan State to stay close and have a chance to win it. All right, we're trying to find out which is going to be the fourth Final Four team earlier. Duke qualified to move on with an 85-64 to 64 win over Temple, and we'll play the winner of the game that you're watching, Kentucky and Michigan State. This reminder, you can chat live with UCLA head coach Steve Lavin. This Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Log on to cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Simply enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. Yesterday, Ohio State advanced to the Final Four by defeating St. John's to win the South Regional. Early this morning, the Buckeyes returned home to Columbus where they were greeted by an ecstatic gathering of fans. Ohio State will face UConn in one of the national semifinals on Saturday, and we are now joined now. 4 o'clock Eastern Time with the Final Four show. We'll get you caught up on the latest news and set the stage for the semifinal doubleheader. 542, the semifinal between Ohio State and UConn gets underway, followed at about 817 by the game between Duke and the winner of the game you're watching, Kentucky or Michigan State. Thanks for watching Penn's Oil at the half. Coming up the second half of the Midwest Regional Final, we'll send you back to Jim and Billy in St. Louis right after this as you take a look at how Turner and Evans execute a two-on-one break. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Jim Nance with Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein in St. Louis. The Duke report card, straight A's, Billy. Well, no, wait, wait a minute. Achilles heel, limited backward resources. Well, remember the St. John's game that went into overtime. They had foul trouble on Avery, foul trouble on Trajan Langdon, and they really don't have what you would consider the traditional point guard backup situation. But like Rick Majerus said, and he's been really fun to listen to in that studio, he's already figuring out, hey, how do you play this team? They have such great balance, a lot of confidence. The coach has been there before. Great out of balance play, but it just didn't work. So they are, that Duke is going to be, they, we all have known it, they're the team to beat. And so far, nobody's been able to much less beat them and stay close to them. Prince draws the foul in the act of shooting. And again, the Blue Devils will take on the winner of this game. And the Blue Devils have beaten both Michigan State and Kentucky during the regular season. The academic All-Stars recognize one player on each team for academic excellence. For tonight's game, the All-Stars are Jamal McGlure from Kentucky and Andre Hudson from Michigan State. Prince ties it with that one. You know, Scott Padgett was reflecting a few weeks back on Kentucky's eight losses on the year, 28 and 8 overall, and he felt that uh, they really had only lost one game. They should have won the rest, he said. The only game we Duke. lost was Duke. Yeah. So we played soft and we backed down to him that time. I know they, like Michigan State, would love that second chance. Prince gives uh, Kentucky the lead back. Good pass over the top. Nice recognition by Peterson. Jim, I, I wouldn't agree with Pageant on that. You know, I think that Tennessee took it to him, and I thought twice, Arkansas. Twice. Yeah, in Arkansas. I didn't see the game in Kentucky, but we had the game at Tennessee, and we had the game at Arkansas, and I'm not going to take anything away from those two teams. They beat Kentucky's on those days. But they weren't sloppy ball clubs either. It's not like they were beaten by teams that couldn't play. They've only played one Big Ten team this year. That was Indiana in December. They beat Indiana in overtime. Peterson, jump stop, shot, no good. But look at him chase it down. Cleaves, he's open. The team doesn't like to take that outside jump shot. He'd rather have to pump fake and drive. Rangers, he's still perfect. They got ball. Uh, Padgett. Now, Jim, we That's have the huge, Padgett. huge problems for Kentucky. You've got their two of their three key senior leaders in serious foul trouble. Evans has had to sit on the bench, and now it's going to be Padgett. He doesn't want to come out. 
This Kentucky team, this is the fifth straight year they've been in a regional final. Right, people forget in 95 they played North Carolina down in Birmingham. Absolutely. And you know, they could be just as easily working on three straight national crowns. That's right. And an there for Arizona, Arizona in overtime. And, overtime. and Joe Granger. Good, uh, again, restricted in how much he can react, but <laughs> enjoying every second of it. It was interesting when his son heard about the accident, he knew that his father, who he says is kind of like a, a wild and crazy kind of guy, he said it, it didn't, now that they know that he's going to be okay, he said it didn't surprise him because his dad's a real risk taker. It was a tough Normally month. it's the other way around where the father says, well, you know, I'm nervous about That's my right. son, you know. <laughs> but a tough month for the Granger family. And his mother as well had an auto accident in November. But this young man is playing. He is having a great regional. Three for three from the field, all threes, and now three for three from the line. Kentucky has gone five minutes without a made field goal. And now look at that lineup on the floor. Only one normal starter. So this is an odd lineup for Kentucky. Normally, they have Hogan out there, but they keep turning the game. Nice. Nice. roll to McGord. You know, it's amazing that Michigan State has played solid defense, but then they have huge breakdowns that lead to direct baskets. There was another example. Nobody helping out on the weak side against that pick and roll. All tied at 46. Boy, these two teams just mirror themselves in terms of how they want to play. Exactly what we expected. Nice hedge and recover. Seven Come on the on. shot clock. Cleves knows it. Five on the clock. He almost likes that situation, but the ball didn't hit anything. He threw that up, Jim, in the idea, with the idea that he's got a good rebounding team and they'd go get the ball. Unfortunately for him, Smith was not in the game. Michigan State's first turnover in 13 minutes on the clock. Now, where do the points come from in this lineup? Prince gave him some in the first half. Eight and all. McGlory wants it inside, and again, they're playing right behind him, giving him good position down low. Boy, a lot of banging. Kamara backs down the defender and misses the chippy. Oh, look, you see what Cleves yeah, from his floor. Back. From the floor. On his back, made the play. I think Kentucky's got to figure out a way to bring either Evans or Padgett in the game to get some scoring in the game with 11 minutes to go. Take the chance they don't get into further foul trouble. But Tubby Smith, he has got so much guts in terms of how he substitutes. Underneath another McGlure, and Prince comes out with it. Another block by McGlure. Turner pushes it up. Back to Prince, who will drive. And then stalls. Got a timeout on the floor. It was a one-point game at halftime, and now it's all tied with 11 minutes left here in St. Louis and the final spot of the final. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks. Gateway. Conseco. And by Honda Cycle. Jim, we've talked so much about what a screener can do, and I want you to watch Jamal McGlure on this particular play. He's going to set a solid screen, and then watch how he opens up to the ball as the screener comes off. By opening up, he he's able to see the good pass and roll to the basket. Now watch him open up to the ball. Perfect pass. Michigan State doesn't get there in time. Beautiful execution. All right, Billy, let's send it over to Bonnie. Bonnie Bernstein. Jim, coming out of the half. Tom Izzo told me how disappointed he was with his team's rebounding. You see how much more aggressive they are under the boards. One of the reasons why they're tied with Kentucky. And there just happens to be a record-setting number of fans here today at the Trans World Dome to watch these two teams vibe for a Final Four bid. 42,519 people here. Largest crowd ever to watch an NCAA regional semifinal or final, Jim. Wow, and it is loud in here. And Prince will go to the line for two. This building will be the site of the Final Four. Long way out, but it'll be here in 2005. 
to Michigan State content to play behind low post players from Kentucky. It gives you a perfect look to throw the ball down in low, and guys like Prince and McGlure have, oh, two to three inches over the guy that's normally guarding them. Kamara would, would likewise. I really think it'd be smart for Kentucky to go down inside, down inside, because there are two key outside shooters sitting on the bench right now in Evans and Padgett. Prince, like Granger, perfect from the field and from the line. Three for three, three for three. And what Tom Izzo is trying to do is to give Antonio Smith some rest on that bench. Turner saves it. What a save. Kamara lays it in. What a burst by Kentucky. And check this defensive pressure. Full court pressure. Picking up. Forcing the ball into the corners. Great job by Kentucky. I don't know how Turner stayed in the air long enough to save it. He just kept going up and up and up and those long arms finally grabbed the ball. Hudson left free for an easy two. Nice job coming down on the baseline by Hudson. And Jim, remember you talked about what Padgett said about his fans. You notice how all of a sudden it's almost like a Kentucky home game when they get a run like that. As far as noise and support. And away from the ball, Hudson and McGlure were battling for position underneath. And they got Hudson. Tonight on 60 Minutes, even though the jury said the mother wasn't guilty of murder, the child welfare agency said she was. What's that all about? 60 Minutes tonight. You know, when you look at starting positions, it's kind of interesting. Bradley and McGlure are the Kentucky center position. And when you take each one of them and break them down, it's not like they have great stats, but you put them together because that basically represents your 40 minutes. And, and combined, they've got fifth, they've got 9.4 rebounds a game and about 17 points a game. Now that would be one fine player at the center position. So these two guys coordinate well down there. McGlore hits the front end of a one and one. It is a good combo, and you can imagine how much. And 10-5. And the, but the physicality of McGlure's game, how much that's also improved Michael Bradley's development. Right, and here's the press again. They're wanting the ball to go in the corner so they can trap. There it is. Bad place for the ball to be. Up over to Peterson. They wanted that ball to be passed exactly where they had good defensive pressure. Michigan State handling. Look at Cleve settling everybody down. Kind of like he was the high school quarterback. Granger. Nice. Rejected by McGlure, the second block of the game. Out to Klein. That's blocked by Allison, who breaks early. But into the arms of Peterson for two. Peterson, the leading scorer. On this basketball team, right under 14 points a game. Can score inside, outside, get a full arsenal here, this young man. Kentucky with a two-point lead. Two Giants colliding. What will give here in the end, in the final nine minutes? Walk. Not called. Kamara too strong. Out to Cleve. We've got a man breaking. It's Hudson. Hudson can tie it. And he'll go to the line. It's a block against Kentucky, against Allison. How smart was that play by Hudson? The ball was passed to the point where if he'd have caught it on the fly, he would have had to catch it at his ankle. So instead, he just veered out a little bit and let the ball drop. See that? That was a terrific move on his part. He realized if he had to reach down for it, there's no way he was going to be able to convert the dribble. You talked about Cleve as being a high school quarterback. This man was, too. He was the varsity starter as a freshman back in Ohio. Trockwood, Ohio is his hometown. And gave it up after his junior year. He had no passion for football, just wanted to concentrate on basketball, even though he had some interest expressed to his high school coach from the likes of Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Paterno and Penn State, and even Tennessee. Could have been on the, on the football roster with Peyton. You know, those kind of schools don't look at you if you can't play football, so you know he must have been some prospect. Back into the game, Evans and Padgett for Kentucky, each with three fouls. And there again, that confidence that Tubby has in that bench to keep two players so critical to his offense on the bench that long. Basically, he's got his starting lineup, Les Bradley, McGlure, who, like I said before, is just like a starter out there. 
Allison steps to the hole. Nice move. Back to a three-point lead. Cleves pushes it forward. Evans caught up, and Kentucky's defense gets set. I think Allison thought they were in the zone. Talking about zone defense. Out to Granger. That's a two. Granger still perfect. Boy, he is squaring up at the basket so beautifully. And these are not just lucky shots from a big man coming out into this ballgame. He did it the other day as well. He leads the Spartan attack with 14. Getting close to his season high of 16. And he had that against Alabama. Padgett with only one made field goal in this game. It's one of his favorite spots. Up ahead, there's the quarterback to quarterback combo. And Michigan State's back in front. And a good hesitation by Hudson. That time, Padgett fell asleep. He didn't get back for defensive balance. Those used to go for six for Mateen Cleaves, but he'll take the two here as Michigan State leads with 7.15 remaining. He'd have rather had the six, Jim. <laughs> Evans lost well, it. That'll be a violation. Traveling. And a whistle on the floor, a timeout. Some might call it a home run. I'll call it a touchdown pass. How about the catch one bad either? Turner and Padgett have been silenced in the point production in with six total between the two of them. But you're loving that pass from Cleves to Hudson. Well, what's this guy in St. Louis? Tony Banks say hey, maybe they want him right here. And look at this catch over the shoulder. Is that Andre Hudson or Don Hudson? That's, there you go. And then the double pump finish. Really a nice catch. Great pass. And of course, uh, Cleves with that quarterback background, mm -hmm. you know, knew how to lead him perfectly. And Tony Banks, the quarterback of the Rams, who plays in this building, number 12 from Michigan State, just like Cleves. But they're not too happy with him here, Dick Vermeil. He may be looking to be scouting Cleves to dress him up, huh? <laughs> well, he's only a junior. And at one time he thought he's he got would fall. He's got nothing to do in the fall. Yeah, Basketball doesn't start till December. At one time he was almost talking to being the next Charlie Ward down at Florida State well, playing the combo. You know, you can be a pro in one sport and still be eligible amateur in another, so. Oh. Charge call. The little call. Uh -huh. And Evans, who had three, Boy, that put in there. That would have been a big one. We know this. Game one at the Final Four will be Ohio State and Connecticut. We've got a four and two ones already set. Will it be another one? That'll be the third time we've had three one seeds make it to the final four. Let me throw one out at you there, Jim. The incredible year Jim O'Brien has coaching the year in the Big Ten. He has lost 18 straight times to Jim Calhoun. Yep. 18 straight. Of course, that was at D.C. and Connecticut when he was back in the Big East. I don't think he'll concern himself about that, though. Pass. Stolen and a hold on Kentucky. And for the Cats, that's their 15th foul, two away from the one one That's the fourth on Evans. Now he's going to have to sit, bringing back here with about three minutes to go. For Kentucky, number 21, Tayshawn Prince, back into the game. Boy, that name. Strong warrior really fits Evans, doesn't it? Yep. It's just incredible. That is the uh, translation for Hashimu. Strong warrior, and it's going to take five of those on one side. Five strong mental warriors. They both pride themselves in conditioning. McClure was boasting yesterday that we're the fittest team in America, and we're going to show that tomorrow, meaning today. Boy, I tell you, Michigan State was really lucky there. Great hands by Smith. And McClure rejects it. Came up from behind. That is his 34th block in NCAA tournament play. Outside, a hold called against State. Perfect timing by McGlure, and look at those huge hands go up there and get that ball. Looks like Ken Johnson of the Buckeyes yesterday. What a game he stepped up to play yesterday to help Ohio State knock out St. John's. Yeah, just when you thought that they where are they going to get their scoring from anywhere other than in the backcourt, Johnson was uh, terrific. And then on defense, what he had seven blocks in that game. Hudson in for Granger. Scott Padgett, who has been sizzling in this tournament. 
always in the late going. Who can forget one week ago at this time against Kansas? Missing the front end of a one and one. And there's Cleves with his Scooney Penn impression with a guard getting another rebound. And as you pointed out in the first half, one of the top five free throw shooters in NCAA tournament history. Fails to convert on the front end of a one and one. Down one. Cleves, that's a three. Yes. He only makes them when they count, That's huh? right. Right before the half to beat the buzzer. Sometimes he hits, he should, throws up air balls and bad-looking bricks. And when it gets tight, he just locks in with that unusual shot of his. Spartans with their largest lead. To be the champ, you got to beat the champ. And here comes the and champ hanging in. And the champs miss two lay-ins into the corner to Cleves. Break for Kentucky. Had exactly what they wanted. Turner is usually such a good finisher when he gets down inside. Peterson put on the line. Two-pointer. Kentucky needs the timeout. They need the timeout, Jim. Yep, and Tubby's going to take it. Tom Izzo goes crazy. Jim, these two guys both coached under J.D. Barnett. Tubby played for J.D. Barnett in college at High Point, and then was his assistant, and so was Tom Izzo at Tulsa. The arrow belongs to Kentucky. Michigan State with the largest lead the Spartans have had all day, six points. And look up into the stands. Well, if we could get this guy, whoever he is, to get out of the way, we'd see this guy right back yeah, here. Sit down. But, yeah, get this guy to sit out of the way here because there's that man Tom back Izzo's there. father. That is Carl Izzo. Who father is this of the guy, coach. anyway? I don't know. Huh? And there's Lupe, Tom Izzo's wife. There's only one, one person that's not in the building that Tom wishes could be here today, and that's his best friend, Steve Mariucci. They well, he was here the other day. He, he got him through one game. Had to get back for a meeting in California. If they make it there, he'll be at the final four. Best friends since their childhood, best man at each other's wedding, roommates from college at Northern Michigan University. Huge possession here for Kentucky, and they deliver. McGlure with a soft touch. There's Mariucci up until 3.30 in the morning Friday night helping Tom Izzo break down Kentucky film. Maybe he should have uh, had a little better defense on that long pass. Well, I think overall that <laughs> must have worked pretty well. That must have been his offensive structure he was working on. Oh, from behind. Oh, Allison almost tipped it away. Similar to that play yesterday on Barkley. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Four minutes remaining. Field goal percentage is pretty even. For complete tournament coverage, go to CBS Sports Live. One of his wicked solid streams. Leaves with a rare miss late. Now basket away. There's going to be a Kentucky foul here. That's going to be McGlure on Smith, who had such perfect rebounding position inside. You know, Jim. And, and Tom Izzo is so proud of Smith in terms of he was really the start of his program. Came from Flint when it really wasn't the thing to do and has really been the guy that's recruited the others as well. From Flint Northern High School where Smith was a teammate with Mateen Cleaves. So that's a combo that goes back to the start of the 90s. Right, state championship ball club. Peterson wants it to the corner. He gives it Bell. Three. Excellent decision by Peterson and Bell, who has not taken many shots, but has been very efficient in this tournament. You can see the confidence being picked up here by Michigan State. It was on this day a year ago where Kentucky earned the moniker the Comeback Cats, and they will have to do it again today. Down seven with three and a half remaining. A year ago, they came back from 17 down with nine and a half to play against Duke, and look at Turner. But be the champs, you gotta beat the champs. It's play after play after play. Timeout, Michigan State. Time for Evans to come back in the game. So those seniors, Jim, are gonna go out swinging if they go out at all. Just a 20-second timeout called by State. Monday on CBS. You wanna have somebody tell it like it is on Monday nights? Well, this is your man, Ted Danson. Becker, Monday at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, right here on CBS. Tom Izzo. 
Judd owes so much to this man for his career. Look at him. He's all worked up. Judd Heathcote. It wasn't it interesting. You know, he had coach Kelvin Sampson, who was Izzo's, uh, uh, and also Izzo, of course, as assistant coach under Judd. Their in the, counterparts in the, in the, in on the night, previous yeah. game. And as I mentioned, J.D. Barnett had a real impact on Tubby Smith because he was his college coach. And then also, Tubby was an assistant for him. And then, then when Tom Izzo left Michigan State, to go down to Tulsa, he also was an assistant under J.D. at Tulsa. They break the press and they get the layup from Bell. That quarterback is throwing some touchdown TDs. Charlie and Bell, Bell, parents of the Spartan guard, savoring that moment. On the blocks, McGlure lost control lost the handle. and Bell with the rebound. Now I think Kentucky's got to start thinking some three-point shooting here. Jim, they're going inside. A lot of time on the clock, but they're starting to get a little margin of separating these two teams. They got to free up Padgett. He's made only one field goal, but none since 11 minutes to go in the first half. And even though Michigan State doesn't have the experience of tournament, I guarantee you the experience of playing in that tough Big Ten this year is really helping them now. Hold on. He stepped once. Too many times. So traveling on Cleves. He's fearless when he penetrates inside, and he's got all that strength. It's a miraculous that he is out here today after that incredible collision with Nahara of Oklahoma the other night. Well, last Sunday, Kentucky was down five with a minute nine to go in regulation to Kansas. Well, they're penetrating, penetrating, but not able to finish. Allison almost makes the swipe. Kentucky ball. Now, what is happening is Kentucky sending five guys to the boards offensively. What Michigan State's doing is releasing guys like Bell. If they get the rebound, they're going to have an easy two on the other end. Matter of fact, they should not try to catch the ball. They should just bat it down the other way. They'll find they'll have a man wide open. Wayne Turner, three-pointer. Ball batted around and into the arms of Hudson and a reach in on Turner. It'll be a one and one. Great effort by both teams here going down the wire. A minute 54 remaining. Well, we have two Big Ten teams at the big dance like we did in Seattle in 89 and also back in the 70s. Remember that one, Billy, in 76. 76 is the first time the two teams from the same conference ever played for the championship game, Indiana and Michigan. That year, Indiana had beaten Michigan twice in the regular season. And that, you know, another interesting thing about 76, two undefeated teams came to the Final Four that year, Rutgers and Indiana. Last undefeated team we've had in college basketball. Missing the front end of the one-on-one. There have been other conferences that have delivered multiple teams. The ACC, the Big East, of course, with three and 85. Kentucky trying to make a fourth state trip, straight trip to the Final Four. They'll send Padgett to the line. One of the things interesting, Peterson has got good size and wingspan to take away that outside shot that Padgett so dearly wants to put up. It's going to be hard to take that uniform off. Scott Padgett, will it be today or will it be saved for at least a week? As his family will tell you, he's going to miss this whole experience, perhaps more than most, because he just dreamt of being a Wildcat as a little boy. It's his dream as long as he could remember. Thanks to this man, really, Wilbur, his father. Well, they look so much alike, you think he keeps changing uniforms up in the stands and... Saw his fiance Cynthia praying for a moment. Boy, he's come up short twice on the free throws, and we talked about him up there with the elite in free throw shooting NCAA tournament play. Bell, not the primary ball, and it needs to get that ball to Cleve somehow. Drive fakes. And Turner prevented maybe a layup. And Jim, with 1.29 to go, let's put in perspective what Kentucky has done since 95. They are 31 and 2 in postseason play. 20 and 1 in NCAA tournament play since 1995. And the only loss again in the title game to Arizona in Indianapolis in 97. A.J. Granger. He was the man who almost single-handedly brought him back from 13 down in the first half. Absolutely. I mean, you had Klein not hitting anything, getting nothing out of Smith offensively, and Granger came off the bench with those key jump shots. He walked. Life for Kentucky. 
But Jim, I think they've got to be figuring out a way to set some solid screens to free up Pageant or maybe Prince from the outside. Now they got Saul Smith in there. We know Smith can hit a three. He's coming out of the game right now, however. Could be Turner on penetration and kick back out, but they gotta figure out a way to free up somebody for a good look from three. Prince has been hot today. Turner now inside and outside. They call the foul on Michigan State. Well, here is what is something that Michigan State cannot afford to do, and that is foul to stop the clock and allow Kentucky to get points on the board with the clock stopped. And it's double bonus the rest of the way, too. Tubby Smith, who has been absolutely phenomenal in postseason play. Right now he ranks next to Mike Krzyzewski in percentage of active coaches. 15 and 4. You add in the Tulsa and Georgia years where he took both programs to the Sweet 16. Turner with two. Wayne Turner, the most experienced college basketball player of all time. Played more games than anyone, 151, including today, breaking Christian Leitner's mark last week. Jim, I didn't realize till doing some research during the evening that he is two steals away from breaking the all-time steal record for NCAA tournament play behind uh, Grant Hill. Hadgett was in there, but unable to get it. They've missed some key free throws. Three on one, ahead to Hudson. And a battle on the floor. You touch the ball, out of bounds, it's white well, They say Turner touched the ball and knocked it out of bounds. Well, no foul, well, actually, Michigan State ball. Jim, actually, his foot was out of bounds while he had Touch while he was touching the ball, so it goes over to Michigan State. Still a good defensive play for oh, sure. Kentucky. Wildcats were not back, pressing at the other end. 104 to go, almost an identical situation I, to a week ago. I didn't understand why the shot clock didn't get changed. A week ago, it was five down with a minute nine. Clock down to 20 seconds. Smith and McGuire battling out here to try to set the solid screen. Cleves wants to drive a 1 4 set here. This possession may tell it all. Cleves gives it up, and Michigan State converts. He is so difficult to handle in the 1 4 because of that power of his. This pageant wanted the screen for the jumper. Long range throw. Oh, Can you believe it? Can you believe it? In an instant timeout. 31.1 to go. It's down to four. Don't you love guys that want to take the big shot? Cleese wanted to take the play. Paget wanted the play. Well, they re earn the name Comeback Cats. 99 style. Michigan State by four. Tonight on 60 Minutes, uh, well, it leads off the lineup, then touched by an angel, and then the Sunday movie, Grumpy Old Men, Jack Lemon, Walter Matthau, and Ann Margaret Starr. Kentucky has the arrow. And each side with two timeouts, two 20s, that is, for the Wildcats. Scott Padgett hits an improbable three for the second straight Sunday. Jim, it's very interesting. Smith takes the ball out of bounds. Cleaves farther away from the ball than any other player, but he's the guy they'd like to touch it. Peterson in traffic and guarded too closely. Now, one of the things we ought to talk about now, if it's going to be a free throw shooting cut, contest, it really favors Michigan State as a team this year. One of the things you look for of teams that can become national champions. They shoot 73%. The man going to the line, Peterson, 81%. They've got a lot of good free throwers. That was an interesting setup by Michigan State, having Cleves as far away from the ball as possible, looking to be the comeback man. McGlure back in for Kentucky. They are a good free throw shooting team. This man over 81%. However, seldom do you face free throw situations with more pressure than this. A spot on the final four on the line. This a one and one. so important there Jim you get into the matter of arithmetic how many possessions do you need you know with a with just a four-point lead they're in a situation they didn't have to take the three now they've got to take a three and a two and he may make it that they can only take threes he has to shoot three they've got to shoot a three 25 seconds to go Smith outside taking too much time Big man on Padgett, but he still fires again. Oh, 
Scott Padgett. It's down to three. Well, we saw a great battle between Scott Padgett, Wally Serbiak, and some of the outstanding senior players, but boy, they just don't like to go out, and this guy squares it up again. They had a big shot. Wasn't it just a week ago, huh? As we said, they're gonna have a hard time ever taking that uniform off Scott Patchett. Perfect rotation, great follow through, and the big thing is he wanted the ball. And immediately, as he did the time before, immediately he signals the timeout. And Jim, we're getting down to that time now where I think if you're Michigan State, you don't let them shoot threes, you follow. Well, one other thing to note here, 18 fouls on Kentucky, so it's still a one-on-one -on -one situation at the other end. And again, watch what Cleves does on this out of bounds. Kentucky's gonna try to double team in the corners, and here comes Peterson. Just made two, are they gonna foul him again? Yes, they do. So Peterson will face another one-on-one, 16.2 remaining. And how big is this? because you know what Kentucky's wanting to do. They want to come down and shoot quickly and foul. So Kentucky's looking at this as at least a two and maybe even a three possession type game, even though there's only 16 seconds to go. Come on, baby, she says. Mother Valerie. Well, when you read stories about the connection between Flores and his yep. mom, it's really tight. She's been so critical to his development. She's a teacher, his father a principal. And now the student, one and one. Oh, perfect follow through. Young man that wasn't heavily recruited. Well, he's making that scholarship pay off now. Evans comes in with the instructions from Tubby Smith. On the brink of tears from the stands. Peterson again. Five-point game, 16 seconds to go. Padgett going down to get in position to pop out for the jump shot. There he goes. Turner forces it. I'm surprised. Rebound out to, last touch by Evans. Michigan State ball. A timeout, a full timeout, Michigan State. And this, this is what college basketball is all about. Five seconds remain. 5.6 seconds away from the completion of a dream. Michigan State's possession and a five-point lead. About to knock out the champs. Lupe Izzo. Padgett reaches in, and it's Peterson again to the line. A reminder, 60 minutes coming up next, except for those of you on the West Coast. Boy, can you imagine how everyone in Iron Mountain, Michigan, just swelling with pride right now in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Tubby Smith about to suffer his first NCAA tournament loss at Kentucky after nine wins. There'll be some more, Jim. Two for Peterson. Wins, I'm talking about, for that one. You know, and you think, you know what a classy individual he was? I think Mike Jarvis set the stage for all losing coaches yesterday. I mean, one of the most gracious guys, great competitors. His team didn't play like he wanted to, but showed so much class yesterday in a losing cause. He always does. He's a poet, Mike Jarvis. Five seconds remain. We say so long to Wayne Turner, Hashimu Evans, Scott Padgett, and the Kentucky Wildcats. The magic is back at Michigan State. The Spartans are going to the Final Four. To be the champ, you gotta beat the champ, and they were able to do it.
state of excellence for sure. A 22nd straight win. And thanks for the memories by that man. Bonnie Bernstein, take it away. Cheer up with about five seconds left. When did you really think this game was at hand? With about five seconds left, Bonnie. I was nervous the whole way. I give my guys a lot of credit. They really played hard and battled back after the big deficit at the beginning. How much more aggressive did they seem in the second half? You seemed unhappy with their defensive play and their rebounding when you came out after the first half. Well, I thought we did a lot better job. We had one possession. We had four in a row offensive rebounds. We checked better. We just did a better job, Bonnie. I want to give you time to enjoy this, but you know you do have Duke ahead of you now. That's you fine. I don't care. I'm just going to enjoy today. I'm going to enjoy today. Tom, congratulations. Thank you. Michigan State goes to their first Final Four since 1979. Enjoy it. Savor it. Tom Izzo, you're going to join now Ohio State, Connecticut, and Duke. The Final Four is all set. The Chevrolet players of the game, Tayshawn Prince from Kentucky, perfect from the field and from the line today and Morris Peterson from Michigan State as the Spartans have spoiled the hopes of a Wildcat wrecking crew for Billy Packer and Bonnie Bernstein here in St. Louis Greg Clark and Rick in New York this is Jim Nance saying so long from the Trans World Dome where Michigan State has advanced to the final four. Oh, what a feeling it is folks we'll see you in St. Pete this has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the 1999 Men's NCAA Basketball Championship. Yes, baby, what's up?